I just got back from a trip to Japan, and being someone that keeps exotic pets and advocates strongly for the proper care, housing, and enrichment for these types of unique animals, I wanted to see for myself what these otter and exotic pet interaction places were like. Come with me to see one of them, and then let's talk about it. Change of plants. Lots and lots of puppies. Oh, I want to touch these. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh what the? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't understand that's not. He doesn't know which way to look. Do I look right or left? I'll just do both at the same time. So obviously those were not beetles. Um, they were fluffy and they had hair and were really cute. No offense to the beetles out there. Another quick pit stop. Gotcha, bye! Found another bearded dragon leopard gecko machine, so we're loading up. And I mean that like literally, like look at this. This is just a few of the ones we got. We got what we want, so we're cleaning them out. It's a treasure hunt, pretty much. Ooh, another leopard gecko. So this next place is where we found the otters and sugar gliders. We pretty much found it by accident roaming the streets of Tokyo. They were literally standing in the street advertising the place. Right here? Yes, uh, the sixth floor. Sixth floor? Yeah. Ah. You wanna go up here? Yes, uh, one new, uh, 1,800, yeah. Okay. Okay? That works? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting experience because a lot of people come to Japan and they want to meet really cool exotic pets. But I'm not exactly sure the ethics of it. Uh, we're gonna see how well they're cared for and if they look like they're in good shape, hopefully. I don't know, maybe we can ask them kind of how how they do it to keep them all like from getting overstimulated and stuff. So, I don't know, we'll see. They have sugar gliders. Okay. Otters and sugar gliders. I hear the otters. The <laughs> shoe is off. A sugar glider, 50 minutes. Otter, 50 minutes. But this 30 minutes chicken and otter room only chicken. Nice and chunky. It's very yellow. Also, I kind of hope that they don't stay in these all the time. Little cages over here. He's really cute. Does he look healthy to you? I think so. He's pretty wide-eyed. He seems pretty happy. <laughs> yeah. He gets lots of love and attention. <laughs> Hi, little one. You're a Japanese super glider. Do you know any Japanese words? I think kawaii. I'm yeah. sure you hear that all the time. Oh yeah, you know what super kawaii kawaii. <laughs> This is a new one, this is Chi, and she really likes Sharon's arm. <laughs> Are these where they live? Are those their cages? Daytime? Sweet. Oh. So they have other cages? Uh, like. Like. No. Oh, I see. Okay. Customer. Uh -huh. I have to guide. Cannot offer. Does that offer? So sugar gliders definitely don't mind being kept in a small comfy space during the daytime while they sleep because they're primarily nocturnal. And I believe here she's saying that they keep them in these pop-up tents overnight. However, I have sugar gliders and I've kept them for about 10 years now and mine would absolutely 100% escape if I left them in a tent like that overnight. <laughs> Little chunky. Mm -hmm. Hello. 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 So we spent a whole 15 minutes in the otter area and I honestly left there feeling like I had a huge hole in my chest. Oh. Okay, 
him out. I these little guys spend pretty much all day every day in these tiny little cages and occasionally get swapped out with the ones in the pool section to finally get out some of those pent up zoomies. As you saw when we first entered the place, the sign they handed us said they're in the process of building a larger facility to keep them in, but who knows how long it'll take before it's actually built. And I'm not sure how long this place has already been running so far. I really hope that it's true, but these places make so much money on people visiting to feed the otters snacks and interact with them. How many do you have? About 20. 20, wow. Now with this, I want to pause for a minute and reiterate my stance on keeping animals like this in captivity. If the animal is captive bred from a good ethical source, if the keeper has the time, space, and money to properly keep them and cover any expenses which may come up, including veterinary costs which you know would be expensive as heck, then I believe they should be able to keep them. A great example of a fantastic Asian small clawed otter keeper is Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch, who I actually went and visited in Florida. His otters have an enormous outdoor enclosure with moving water and an attached air-conditioned building for them to freely enter and exit from. If you want to see someone who properly keeps these guys, I highly recommend checking out his content. Oh, do they go somewhere else at night time? Or they stay like here? Yeah, stay here now. Uh, we built new house, uh, Opa's house, Chiba. Oh, okay. They prepared the Chiba. Okay, they like swapped them. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh. He's out. Sleepy. Oh, hey, buddy. Sorry, I woke you up. Yeah. Oh. oh. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. Oh. What's going on with your hair? Oh, buddy. Oh, no. He got scared. What's first time? Oh, first time? Yeah. Oh. Oh, poor buddy. Oh. Oh, I see. That's good. That's good. Naruto. Oh, that's funny. His name's Naruto. Hi, Naruto. Sorry, buddy. Oh. Hi. You okay? Oh. Oh, no. Swimming like crazy. Hi, Naimu. Oh my goodness! Wow, so cute! <laughs> Also, I'd like to make sure it is well known that these workers are just workers there. They do not own the place, they don't own the otters, and they were both very sweet and they seemed to care a lot for the otters and gliders, and they were just doing their jobs. So cute! Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, so sweet! So, my overall experience at the place is a little complicated. While the animals themselves did seem generally healthy, other than the mental state of lots of the otters, and that one with the missing hair, poor little guy. I just can't get behind the way they're kept. I believe in animal interactions between the general public and exotic animals, as it can be the reason why someone's fire inside is ignited to help support conservation, or the reason why someone realizes how much they love animals and want to help them. It can really create and inspire a love for the animals, but there's a right way to do it. To be fair, I didn't visit any other otter cafes or interaction places other than this one, and I'm sure there could be some good ones out there, but my personal opinion opinion is to support the ones that support conservation and the general practice of keeping animals in the best, most naturalistic ways possible, especially if they're being used for interactions with the public to generate revenue. So, um, the otters are in their poop. Yeah, they're like in little tiny cages. Um, yeah, it smells very strong of ammonia. They just wait all day for people to feed them treats and food. That one that was in the tub going around was literally just in a loop, just going in circles back and forth, back and forth, because he has nothing else to do. Yeah, that was really sad. So what do you guys think? Have you ever been to Japan and visited an otter cafe or any other exotic animal interaction places in Japan? Or have you ever been to a place that keeps these otters where the general public can see them that is reputable and does a great job with them? It's important to celebrate the good places too. I'm sure there are some awesome zoos out there that keep them too that I haven't been to yet. Let me know in the comments. 
I have many, many, many more Japan videos to show you guys. If you want early access to the videos on this channel, as well as my new second channel called Catalia's Curiosities, where I'll be posting lots of Pokemon and shopping related videos, especially ones from Japan, then be sure to check out my Patreon. My Patreon supporters not only get early access, but they also get lots of behind the scenes stuff and special updates on my animals and farm projects. They get first dibs on animals when I have new critters looking for homes, and I always respond to my messages from my patrons. Plus, all of my patrons' names are added at the end of my videos. Thanks so much for being here. Anyways, stay tuned for more Japan videos and a video coming soon introducing you to the newest member of the Catalia's Critters Farm. Here's a sneak peek. Alright, see you guys in the next one. Bye!